do you use this stuff guys? Press fit fittings on your plumbing and gas installations. What do you think of it? Do you think it's the future? Or do you think it's the end of plumbing and gas? Anyway, put in the comments down below guys. And let me know what you think of press fittings. So, let's get on with it and find out exactly what these things are all about. Now, there are a load of different manufacturers out there for press fit fittings and tools, but we're gonna basically concentrate on Gebrit. Why? Well, it's because it's the only one we've got and it's the only one we use. So, uh, this is out of Tom's van. Looks like it's seen better days and he needs a new one. Anyway, let's take a look. In 1874, Caspar Jebert opened a tinsmith business in Rapperswil, Switzerland. In 1905, his sons Albert and Leo were the first ones to manufacture the first lead-lined wooden toilet system. In 1952, the company was the first to produce the plastic toilet system. 1964, the first concealed toilet system. And in 2004, Gebret acquired MapPress for 372.5 million euros. What a bargain. Now these fittings. So Gebret fittings are different than other fittings, as you can see. So uh, this is an aqua, um, aqua gas fitting. This is the only one what does the same O-rings for plumbing or gas. Got yellow O-rings, but we'll talk about the O-rings in a minute. But uh, Gebrit ones actually come with these <coughs> reusable caps. So these caps can be reused for fittings, obviously. They come with this uh, press indicator on the side here, which has the size on it. So this is a 54 mil fitting. And when you press this, when you see me press it, this will actually come off. And that's the only fitting what does that. Also in here, there is three sections where it can leak when it's not been pressed. So really, you've got no excuse when you're pressing these that you haven't pressed it. Because first of all, you've got this indicator on the side here to tell you that you've pressed it. Also, you've got these three points in here where if you don't press it, it'll leak under pressure. And secondly, when you have pressed it, it distorts the fitting massively. So you've got no excuse with uh, Gebret that you haven't pressed it. Anyway, let's have a look at the different types of fittings they do. Gebret matte press stainless steel fittings are especially suited for potable water installations as well as open and closed heating and cooling circuits. There are special fittings available for gas installations as well as solar and industrial applications. Gebret matte press carbon steel fittings are suited for closed heating and cooling circuits for solar and industrial installations and there are special ranges of fittings available. There are three types of carbon steel pipes available, externally galvanized for closed heating and industrial applications, plastic coated for chilled water applications, and internal and externally galvanized pipe made especially for water sprinkler systems. Kebra mat press copper fittings are specially suited for potable water installations as well as for open and closed heating and cooling circuits. There are special fittings available for gas installations as well as solar and industrial applications. Kebra mat press cunife fittings are seawater resistant. It is specially suited for shipbuilding and has proven itself over many years with pipelines carrying salt water to lots of installations. Cunife is copper nickel iron alloy and it's used in shipbuilding for engine room systems, the supply of service water, pool water and heating water. The Gebret Mepler multi-layer pipe system combines the characteristics of plastic with those of metal. 
the multi-layer pipe which consists of a plastic inner pipe and an aluminium pipe and a protective plastic layer on the outside allows for easy safe and flexible processing whilst also complying with high hygiene standards the fittings are made of PVDF which is polyvinyl iodine fluoride and gunmetal or brass ensure a high degree of safety during the processing as well as reliable tightness. These characteristics make Jebra Mepler especially suited to potable water supplies and heating installations. Shall we have a look and see what we get in the box then and what different components we're going to be needing? Well obviously the first one is the gun itself. So this is actually a Nova press gun and it comes in different guises and different outer colours and you'll see different manufacturers pretty much using the same gun. First thing, the batteries. So if we take the battery out, you can see the battery is actually a Milwaukee battery. So it's exactly the same as the Milwaukee's. So if you do have the Milwaukee batteries, then they will interchange. So obviously we need the charger as well, which we've got there. So the bigger one we're going to be looking at in a bit, that's got a different battery. But anyway, this one has the Milwaukee ones. And if you don't believe me, Tom's got all the Milwaukee stuff and his batteries here, but there you go. Now, other nifty things about this is the head can turn, can rotate. So if you're trying to get into dodgy locations, it will actually spin around. And then we've got the button to activate it. So what we've got to do to activate it is keep our finger on the button. So the light goes out, then we can take it off and it goes through the circuit. Now, if the battery goes flat for any reason, while you're halfway through pressing, it shouldn't do because you get an indicator on air telling you when your battery's flat. You can press this here and it releases it so you can actually get it out. So we need jaws to crimp the pipe and this is a 35 millimeter one okay so you need to take out the pin slide in the door there you go open the cramp put your fitting in you'll see that in a minute and uh, well that's how you crimp it so every size will need its own jaw and if you're doing the MLCP pipe as well you'll need different uh, jaws for that as well now if you do press your fitting and it gives you like an ear of copper on it or steel then you need to make sure you're using this spray stuff what you have to do is you have to spray it on your jaws and what it does is it it, it stops the copper stretching okay so it stops it making little like little ears that's the best way I can describe it so remember different jaws for every size we've got from uh, 50 mil up to 35 millimeters he says jamming the bottle the can in with that we get some nice pipe uh, cutters as well in this box and then we get this very important piece of equipment this is the marker the gauge for marking on the pipe so every size of pipe there's 12 mil 15 mil uh, 18 22 28 and on this side we've got 54 42 35 and even the bottom is a gauge this is for 108 and this is for 88.9 because what you do is this is a piece of 15 so you get the 15 you place it on there like that you take out the marker pen that's supposed to stay inside there and uh, mark your depth you then slide that onto the fitting with the mark again you'll see that when I've pressed it and that tells you you've gone the right depth and also if it's moved so might look like a useless piece of equipment this and why do you need it but it's actually very very important another mega important piece of equipment is this 
your deburring tool. So you need to deburr inside and outside of the pipe for every time you do a fitting. Otherwise, you can damage the O-ring inside the fitting. So that's what we got in the standard kit box. So now you can buy them whatever you want and whatever you need. We desperately need to get a new one by the looks of it. Tom's, uh, anyway, Tom <laughs> seems to have been hammering it over the last year since it was last calibrated. And then we get to calibration. Now it all depends on the manufacturer and it all depends on how many presses you do will depend on when these and the jaws need calibrating. And there are some jaws out there who will, what will only do so many, well, all of them will only do so many um, presses before you have to replace them, but some of them actually break as well when they're at the end of the life. So watch out for that as well, because they ain't cheap, these. On average, you're looking for a set like this about two grand. So uh, not very cheap at all. So that's the equipment. Let's finally get to see how we're going to press some fittings. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to press these two pieces of steel together. These are 15 millimeter carbon steel pieces of pipe, which uh, as you can see by the coding is for water. So if you want to do a gas fitting, the first of all, the O-ring will be yellow inside there, and also it will say gas on there, and these ends are also yellow. So um, once it's pressed, the little yellow label needs to stay on the pipe. So whether you're doing stainless steel or whether you're doing copper for gas, you will need to make sure that the customer knows the yellow labels cannot be painted over. Um, so it can be easily identified because once it's been pressed you can't tell the colour of the o-ring so different colours for different things so make sure you use the right fitting and the right o-ring for the right application you cannot take a yellow o-ring out and put it into this fitting because it's not identified and Jebra have actually stopped selling the yellow o-ring separate now so stop you doing that. So don't go flicking them out of a 90 degree elbow uh, if you want to use a 45 and you've only got 45 degree water ones left. Yes, the fittings are the same. It's the O-rings what are different, but it also needs that little sticker on there. So you have been warned. So first thing we need to do is get the right jaws. So get the machine, open it up, get the 15, Check on there that it's a 15. And also, this is actually an M-press fitting as well. So the two most common uh, jaws there are, or fittings, are M and V. Now the M1, you can see the O-ring is right at the end. The V1, I think sometimes they call them B fittings as well, is a bit further down. So you need a different profile for those. We're using M fittings. So, just going to put the jaws into there, and now that's ready as long as my battery is charged enough. Okay, now it won't press unless that's pushed in either. So, that's going to be pushed in all the way in. Now, first thing I need to do is get my depth gauge, find my 50mm one, which is here, take out my pen, put in the pipe and mark where the depth of where it needs to go okay you just need to do it on one side put that back in that's going to go take the cover off that's going to go into there like that now what is the minimum lengths we can have between um, pressing well this is the minimum length you can get in between. So these um, extended sections, what you can buy from Jebret, um, they're actually 50 millimeters in length. So for, I think it's 12 and 50 mil, the minimum length in, uh, of these is 50 mil. If we're doing 22 and 28, I think the minimum length is about 56 millimeters. 
And then for 35 mil, you're looking about 62 millimeters is the minimum length. So you can see the little mark I've put on there and I place that on there and I can see it's gone there. But again, if this was a piece of um, steel tube, which I've just cut, I would have to deburr the inside and deburr the outside first. And then I can go in, make sure it goes full socket. So open the jaws, place in the fitting, make sure they, they squeeze them together like that so it doesn't move. I can find the trigger, press the trigger till the light goes off. And then it automatically does it for us. Then we can undo the jaws, take out the pipe, and then you can see the press indicator comes off and we can see we've successfully press that fitting. So can you see, this is what I mean by the little ears there. Um, I was hoping it was gonna do that because it's the one that's most used. No, you can see that there. So that's why we need to spray inside there to stop this little thing sticking up where it's catching, okay? Because it's kind of binding. So this one definitely needs a spray. because it's the most common one used. So hopefully next time that's pressed, it won't drip as much. So that's pressing using this smaller 102 one. Let's have a look at pressing the bigger fittings. Now the gun we're gonna be using for pressing this 54 mil is the 203 plus, but there is also the 203 XL. Now again, like before, I need to get my depth marker for this 54mm pipe and I need to mark my uh, depth gauge, as you can see here. Now again, because we're pressing the bigger size, we need one of these adapter jars to go into the machine, not the little ones we were using before, and we're going to be needing this press collar. So this press collar is for 54 mil pipe. So what we need to do is make sure everything's where it needs to be. Take the dust cap off the 54 mil socket, place it in, make sure it goes full socket. Get the clamping collar or the crimping collar around the fitting. Then put it into the adapter jaw the right way. And then like before, all it is, is pressing the button until the light goes out, take your finger off and then it should press it automatically again for us. So then we undo the clamp, take off the collar, we can now remove the press indicator tape and you can see it's completely pressed. Now that's pressing using this one and the larger sizes doing the 54 mil. So you can really see how much it does distort the fitting. And if you have a look inside, I don't know whether you can see that. That, oh, let's set that end off. Can you see me? So um, does it reduce the bore a bit? Oh, a tiny little bit. But for a commercial installation, this is a no brainer. No hot works permit needed, less likely of hood of a leak, as long as you do it right and as long as you follow the manufacturer's instructions. Um, so on a commercial situation, I've, I've been using this a long time on commercial. Everybody thinks uh, pressing's new. It's been around about 40, 50 years pressing. Um, and I've been using it right, when, <laughs> straight off working with my dad, we, we pressed then. So yeah, it's been around a long time now. It's new kind of to the domestic market. But if you look at the fittings compared to a uh, integral solder ring one or an end flow one, they're miles bigger and more clunky. And you do have restrictions as well. I've shown you the minimum depth and trying to get them in underneath boilers and stuff like that. It can be a bit of a pain and it does take a bit of practice. But again, 
you can press with water flowing out of these <laughs> whereas you can't solder with water flowing out of them so they do have a place in the domestic market but again you've got to remember if you're putting these under floors it needs to be all ventilated subfloors ventilated voids like you would do with any normal copper solder fittings so uh, there are some certain circumstances where you ain't going to be putting this in like concrete screens and all the rest of it now another couple of things about uh, press fittings one of them is you can't mix and match your steels direct like that so you can't put a steel fitting into a copper fitting because you'll get electrolysis happening two dissimilar metals create an electric current with water uh, acting as electrolyte will create corrosion so you can't do that you'll have to put a brass fitting in between the two keep them separated other things are chrome fittings so if you wanted to put a chrome piece of chrome into there Yes, you can do that, but you must remove the chrome, the chrome off the copper. What's it called? Plating? Yeah, the chrome plating. <laughs> so you've got to remove the chrome plating off the length of what it's going into, and then crush it or crimp it. So uh, there are another couple of things you need to know about the press fittings. So that is my look at press fittings but i'm really interested in what you guys think do you think we should be pressing do you think it's good for the domestic market now for me and this is just my opinion i would say get rid of plastic fittings we don't need them get rid of them completely they're no good for the environment they're no good for plumbing they look bloody awful they're big and horrible and the DIYer can quite easily do them. Now is the DIYer going to go and spend two grand on a press machine and get press fittings? No they're not. So uh, they will have it calibrated every year or whatever. So for me I would prefer this easily than uh, push fit fittings, the plastic ones. Um, but that's just my opinion. What's your opinion? Stick it in the comments down below. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. Catch you on the next one.